to the channel I'm Brad Lone Wolf and following on from last week's rucksack recommendations and what to look for this week I'm going to be looking at sleeping bags which is again one of the more vital things that you need to think of when when purchasing equipment same as last week I'm gonna be doing uh, budget sleeping bags middle of the road sleeping bags and towards the top end uh, of the sleeping bag price ranges for clarity's sake and to keep the video short ish I'm only going to be looking at two season and three season sleeping bags and I'm only going to be looking at synthetic sleeping synthetic filled sleeping bags if anybody wants me to have a look at down sleeping bags, bearing in mind that they do cost a lot more, um, mention it and I will have a look at down sleeping bags. But remember, as I say, down sleeping bags tend to be more on the expensive side. So with that being said, let's swap over to view and uh, look at some of the sleeping bags I'd recommend So as I say I'm going to be looking at uh, these in order So I'm going to be looking at two season sleeping bags first and then the three season sleeping bags Going from budget to towards top of the range Now again, you don't have to go for what I say. You don't have to Purchase what I'm going to show you this is just an idea of what you can get for the money now obviously the more you pay the the more features you get the more insulation you, you get the the better they tend to be particularly with sleeping bags it is recommended that um, you try them if you can uh, in in the store now obviously that doesn't mean to say that you camp out overnight but you feel if you can try them out um, get inside them see what they feel like see if they're ex they're comfortable for you then that's ideal so in terms of the two season bags that's what we're going to be looking at first two season sleeping bags in the budget range uh, we're going to be looking at the Euro Hike Adventurer 200. This has actually been in the range now for quite a few years. Um, it's a good solid two season sleeping bag. It's usually a lot of people's first sleeping bags. Um, it is a two season sleeping bag, so don't expect it to be able to take you down to anything below about four, maybe three degrees. <laughs> Um, the, it does have baffles in them it does have both a left or it, you can get them in left and right handed zips uh, which does make a difference if you're right handed you tend to want to go for a left handed zip if you're left handed you want to go for a right handed zip reason being is it's easier to reach across your body to unzip a sleeping bag than it is to unzip a sleeping bag on the same side as yourself so that is something to be aware of when you're buying a sleeping bag something else to be aware of or something else to look for particularly if you get into the three and four season sleeping bags is the number of baffles that you get uh, both in terms of neck baffles and face baffles and how far in you can actually cinch the the sleeping bag so in this case you can pull in your uh you can pull the the opening for your face quite close to keep as much warmth in as possible 
If I swap to this picture, you can also see that there is also a shoulder baffle there to keep the warmth in the sleeping bag uh, down below your body. You'll also notice from this picture that this is a mummy shaped sleeping bag. It's the same for all the sleeping bags I've picked actually. They are all mummy shaped. The reason for this is they do keep you warmer because there's less volume within the sleeping bag. It actually makes actually warms the air up a lot quicker and therefore you stay warmer. There is a trick to staying warm in a sleeping bag. I'm not going to go into it in this video, but there is a trick to staying warm in a sleeping bag, uh, which a lot of people don't really understand. Um, like I say, it's not, not for this video. So in terms of a budget sleeping bag, this would be the one I'd recommend. Like I say, it's £55, but you do get features that you get in some of the more premium sleeping bags such as the shoulder baffles the face baffle the mummy shape and um, the zip on either side remember to make sure that you're purchasing the right side the correct side to the zip for yourself the disadvantage to these to this one is it tends to be a rather large pack size and it does tend to be a lot heavier than any of the other sleeping bags in a two season in the two season range you'll also notice this is a good view actually that um the the baffles i say the baffles the area where the insulation is kept the filling is kept it's quite widely spaced meaning that the insulation inside can move around a bit bit more than some of the others I'm going to show you now it's not necessarily a bad thing it's not it mean it doesn't mean that everything's going to end up on one side or the other but it does it does mean that there's less stitching and so that the insulation can move more and potentially not always but potentially cause cold spots so with that being said move on to a middle of the road uh middle of the road range a middle of the road sleeping bag i will be able to speak today and it is kind of it's almost like the upgrade of the one that we're looking at currently and that is this one the oex rome 200 sleeping bag so this is a 70 pound sleeping bag and at first glance particularly here it does look very similar to the adventurer that we've just had a look at and to be honest there's not much difference between them the main difference being is the filling is different the insulation is different so it is a slightly thinner sleeping bag in comparison to the adventurer it's slightly lighter and it's slightly smaller pack size the main disadvantage however as you can see there you do not get a shoulder baffle now obviously i've just been mentioning that shoulder baffles are good things and you need um, shoulder baffles and while this is true if you look at the design between the two particularly this area here you'll notice that the adventurer has got although it's got a hood uh, for you to put your head in this one's got a much deeper hood so you can actually get your head a bit further in there you can cinch it up a little bit more i would still say the shoulder baffle is better but because you can pull this one really in tight shoulder baffles aren't going to matter so much i know that's kind of a contradiction to what i've been saying but the tighter you can pull in you can cinch in the sleeping bag the the better so let's pull ourselves back to the first picture so yeah no shoulder baffle but the fact that it is a tighter sleeping bag and you can pull the 
the the facing tighter does make make a difference again mummy shaped uh, i've already said why that's uh why that's actually better uh a better shape than a square sleeping bag if you find if you find that a, a mummy sleeping bag is too tight around your feet and you don't like it go for a square sleeping bag the the main difference is they're not as warm particularly around your feet but they have got more space it's like i say it's entirely up to you which one you go for i'm just giving an overview so as i say this is slightly better feeling slightly warmer slightly more mummified shape and for a middle of the road sleeping bag it's not bad at all now i did mention with the adventurer about the space in between each of the each of these insulation baffles and you can see it's kind of roughly the same as the adventurer the next one we'll look at however you will see you will see a big difference speaking of that we might as well move on to that one now and that is the deuter exosphere zero now it could be argued that this is more of a three season sleeping bag as opposed to a two season sleeping bag mm. now that depends on what your definition of a two season and three season is to me a two season sleeping bag is will take you down to zero degrees or freezing point um without any trouble whereas a three season sleeping bag will go down to about minus seven minus eight without too much trouble so with the deuter um you can see straight away that you get more insulation baffles they are also elasticated as well which means that this actually hugs your body a lot better than the other two doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be tight around your body but it does give you a bit, it does hug your body a bit better better toe box here than the the other two that we were looking at so you can put so your feet have got a little bit more room to to splay out if you need them to much better filling uh, you notice in the that's not the compression strap the compression sack that's something i will come on to on another video actually um because of the filling it's a much better pack size much smaller much lighter pack size um you can see it's got the the hood baffle there as well it's, i think it's got a shoulder baffle this one uh it's got fleece insert actually this one yeah anti-catch baffle oh that's the the zip baffle yep so natural foot position like i say which the other ones haven't got body warmer fleece uh, so it's got yep okay so that's why it doesn't have baffles it doesn't need it uh because it's got fleece lining which for a two season sleeping bag that's actually not a bad thing uh particularly if you find obviously if you're laying if you're sleeping on the ground and you've got your, your sleeping mat um Although your sleeping mat is designed for insulation and to take, make you insulated, it can. There are times when you, your body, particularly your kidneys, get cold and that will make you feel cold, which is why these guys have put fleece lining around that area. So, as I say, for me, this is definitely one of the top, top of the range sleeping bags. There are others out there. As I say, you don't have to take my word for it. There are other companies and other sleeping bags to look at. 
So now we're going to move on to three season sleeping bags. And it's probably going to come as no surprise that the next three sleeping bags are essentially going to be the upgraded version of the three that we've just looked at. But you will notice a difference. So the first one is the Eurohike Adventurer 300 XL. Now this one's the extra long version for taller people. The only difference between this and the normal 300 is the length and the width. So you might look at that and think, you might be looking at that picture and thinking, that's a big sleeping bag. Remember, this is designed for uh, very tall people. With this one, you can probably see that straight away that there is a lot more filling on this one. And that's as it should be. This will take you down to approximately minus five. So you want a lot more filling. You've definitely got better shoulder baffles in here than you would have in the other two as well as the stowage pocket for keeping things warm. Now this is usually things like your mobile phone, if you take your mobile phone with you. The reason being is cold will sap the energy out of a battery quicker than playing any game on it, on your mobile phone. That's a lie actually, but the cold does sap the energy out of your battery which is why you get these pockets on the inside. But a decent shoulder baffle, a decent face baffle as well, so you can cinch it all in and be nice and cozy and toasty warm. So that's, that's really about it. As I say, it is just essentially the upgraded version of the Eurohike 200, uh, Adventure 200 sleeping bag. What it does, obviously what it does mean if you go up to this sleeping bag, the Adventure 300, you've got a lot more bulk, a lot more weight. But it is a lot warmer. So again, entirely up to you uh, which one you go for. Middle of the road sleeping bag is the EV, the Phantom EV300 from OEX. This one's actually a right-handed zip, which is unusual on uh, on a website. So in terms of left-hand, right, right-handed zip, if you look, it's had the heart side of the zip is whatever is when you're laying down on, on your back whatever side the zip is will determine whether it's a left or right handed so in this case if you're laying down in this one uh, the zip is on the right hand side so again with the OEX slightly tighter sleeping bag the baffles in this case the insulation baffles they are wider now as i've already mentioned swings and roundabouts with this with the wider spacing of the baffles there is the the um insulation can do its job a bit more effectively but it does have the tendency to shift around a bit not always but it does have the tendency to do that Again, a nice cinched in, a nice uh, cord that you can cinch, your, cinch the bag right into your face. But once again, a disturbing lack of shoulder baffle. Hmm. I'm not sure, particularly with the three season sleeping bag, you would definitely need a shoulder baffle. I'm not sure about this one. It doesn't matter how how much you can pull the the face in if it doesn't have a shoulder baffle. There's not a lot of point, which is strange considering the budget one. The budget sleeping bag has got a shoulder baffle, 
Okay, it's a basic shoulder baffle, but at least it's got one. And the top of the range one will have a shoulder baffle. So a middle of the road one without a shoulder baffle is kind of a little bit disturbing. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad sleeping bag. It's just something to be aware of. With the with the packs with the pack size what again which we're looking at here they being a slightly more premium sleeping bag or a middle of the road sleeping bag it's going to be smaller a smaller pack size and a lighter pack size than the adventurer 300 that we just looked at especially as this one's a standard size and the one we would and the adventurer that we were just looking at was the xl so keep, remember to keep that in mind that the XL is extra long and so it will be extra heavy. So that's the middle of the road one. And I have just remembered that I haven't mentioned prices on these yet. So I'll go back at the end of these, at the end of this, and I'll point out the prices. They are there. And I will be mentioning the full prices as well. So moving on to the top of the range sleeping bag. And you probably see the difference straight away. The Deuter Exosphere uh, minus six. And you might be looking at this person thinking, well, they're sleeping slightly weird. People sleep in all different ways. Uh, so you can't really judge can't really judge people on the way they sleep to be honest a lot of people end up sleeping like this completely twisted up in their in their sleeping bag so as i say this is the minus six version of the exosphere we just looked at again this is more or less an upgrade on what we were just looking at so the stitching in the baffles um and the insulation baffles means that the insulation is not going to move about as much uh, but it does mean that potentially you've got uh, slightly more compression areas just something to think about the with this being a proper three season sleeping bag if we look at this per at this picture here you can see They've pulled the sleeping bag down as far as they can. In fact, it'd probably go a little bit more, if I'm honest. But they've pulled it down so there's no heat escaping out of their face. And uh, so obviously they're going to stay nice and warm overnight. Properly shaped toe box, as you would expect in a sleep in, in a premium sleeping bag. Or top of the range sleeping bag. Um, not only is it inclined slightly at the top. It's also, you can't see it from this picture, but it's also slightly wider at the foot. So when you're when you're naturally laying on your back and your feet lean out and to the side, that is what this is for. It's also designed, this one is also designed, you can see by the foot warmer symbols there, to have a bit more a bit more um padding, a bit more insulation around the feet. So those people that get cold feet um they your feet will stay warmer in this one it's also got the added advantage being a foot warmer system that the zip does not go all the way down which obviously helps with insulation and keeping your feet warm so these are they're just six um sleeping bags to think about the features that I've pointed out on on them are things to think about as well um, as I say at the end of the day you don't need to go you don't need to go for these six sleeping bags you go for the ones that you feel is best for you so a couple of things to point out just before I sign off on this video um, I did say I've mentioned the price of these. Uh, so the Adventurer 200 at normal retail price is £55. 
The OEX Rome 200 at normal retail is £70. And the Deuter Exosphere at normal retail is 145 As for the three season sleeping bags, normal retail price for the Adventurer 300 XL is £80. I believe the normal ones are slightly smaller. They're slightly less expensive. The OEX Fathom EV is £95, and the Deuter minus 6, uh, Exosphere minus 6, is £170. Now, you might be asking, is there a difference between women's sleeping bags and men's sleeping bags, or is it a case of manufacturers just shrinking and pinking no there is it's not a case of manufacturers shrinking and pinking there is a big difference the shape of a lady sleeping bag is is quite significant and I've actually done a video on the shape of a lady sleeping bag, female sleeping bags. Um, it will be in the playlist somewhere. I, I'm not entirely sure where, but it definitely will be there. But the main difference between men's sleeping bags and uh, women's sleeping bags is in shape particularly around the legs around the hips and around the feet now the reason for this is obviously the different shape of women's hips uh, women uh, women's hips and down to their down through their thighs and also because women tend to, to sleep colder they uh, they tend to have more insulation needs, particularly around the feet, and particularly when they have the fun when they think it's funny to put their cold feet, drag them out of their sleeping bag and put them on your. No, we won't go there. I'm sure we've all experienced it at some point. Women's cold feet creeping their way onto warm bodies, but that's exactly what it's for. <laughs> 